Hello, uh, Crystal here. Welcome to another video with the Intact of Immersive HQ. In this video, I'm going to show you a simple way where in Touch Designer, we can make these sock patterns and convert them into SVG files where we can plot it or to have it be laser cut or use it for any other vector projects. Here's some examples of the patterns made in Touch Designer that is laser cut burned. So let's begin. Unfortunately, currently Touch Designer doesn't have an export for SGV files. There are, although, workarounds where we can make it into SGV files. One way is using Python external library, which I did a blog on how we can do that in the Attractive Immersive HQ blog, which I will put a link to it in the caption below. But for this video, I'm going to show you a different method where we can use Adobe Illustrator to make it into SGV file. And I personally find it a lot easier than using external library. But if you want to do some Python, this is, uh, I'll have this link in the caption below. Before we get into Touch Designer, let's talk about what is a SVG file. SVG is a vector form image versus a raster form image like a PNG or a JPEG or a PSD. So whereas like a PNG is pixel based, uh, SVG is vector based. So if you have a image that is in Photoshop, maybe you notice if you stretch it really big, it gets pixelated. Whereas in an SVG file, an illustrator can keep expanding it, it wouldn't get pixelated because it's a vector form. And currently in Touch Designer, whenever you export it, it doesn't have a vector form and that's why we need to make it into a SVG file. In Touch Designer, as always, I'll start with a clean network and I will start putting a sphere sop. Sphere sop. And in sphere sop, throughout this project, I'm going to make it to wireframe world. So I'll make this viewer active and press W so I can see what's happening because we're going to use a line sop afterwards. And that's the line sop is what will give us the patterns we want uh, or the line work we want to make into a vector. So this, I'm going to change a primitive type to NURBS and into rows. Cool. And in this detail, yes, I'm going to have rows be 20 and columns be 40. And I'm going to just kind of play around and see what I would like in this. Cool. And uh, in Sopland, if you make a viewer active and you move inside of it, it only moves inside this operator. So if we uh, twisted this, if you want to like in this angle, we'll still need a transform to make it into that degree of rotation. But I'm not going to rotate this yet, or maybe I won't rotate this at all. I'm going to add a twist. And let's twist this and make this wireframe mode again. So um, be active and press W. And I'm going to twist it in Y. And I will twist the strength into Let's play 75. Actually, let me twist this in X. There you go. Yeah, that's that's fun. I like that. And I'll add a null after this. Cool. This is our first pattern. And let's do our second pattern. I'm going to add another sphere stop. And I make this wireframe mode. And this, I'm going to make it, keep it as a mesh and change this to be row and column. And the details, I'm going to lower this to be row to be eight and this column to be seven. And I want to twist this to add a twist. In this twist, I'm make this wireframe. I'm going to twist the y axis and I'm going to increase this. Oh, interesting. Let's do 115. And I want this actually on the top view. So I'm going to add a transform. And in the transform TX, I'm going to have it to be 90 degrees. And let's see what's happening. Oops, I don't want this to be 90. I want the rotation to be 90. Cool. That's an interesting pattern. And you see, this is what I'm doing, but you can play around with it. Maybe you'll see how it looks if you change the twist. Like, that's like a nice, interesting flower shape. Or uh, play around with the number of rows and columns. Ooh, that makes it more like a flower. 
but um, make this your own. And I'm going to add a null after this. Right. And let's just do one more. One, if you've seen my earlier um, tutorials, one of my favorite little sop tricks are using uh, coffee sops. So here's like a circle with 40 division and I'm just copy and paste this and add a coffee sop between and it'll create some cool patterns. This wireframe so you can see what's going to happen. And like, bam, look at that. <laughs> you can play around with the divisions and lower this division and lower this one. We'll make this to be like 25. That's cool. And I'll add a null after this. Break three patterns. And then add a geometry comp after all this. Geometry. 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 You may notice after doing geometry comp, like, oh, okay, cool, it just looks like a circle or a sphere or a weird shape thing. Uh, I want to see lines, so we're going to use a line salt. Uh, sorry, line mat. And let's just first just add this material onto these geometries. Great, we see some stuff. Awesome. But I'm going to change this. So I want all the distance near, distance far, uh, width near, width far, all to be one. And I'm going to change the line color all of to be black. So line near, line far to be black. Great. And we don't really see it because it's black and this is like a dark gray. But if we add a camera, camera comp and a uh, render top. Right now, all of them are layered together, so I'm gonna just wanna see one at a time. So I'm gonna just put Geo1. And cool, we see a pattern. So you see, see Geo1, see Geo2, and Geo3. I'm gonna make this smaller so it can fit in the frame. Great. I'm going to change this back to what I did have. I'm going to twist this eight and seven and have this twist number to be one fifty. Cool. Great. So now we have this. I'm going to um, add a movie file out. And as I had my little spiel earlier that you, that there's no exporting to SVG. So you have it in TIFF, JPEG, BM, BMP, uh, OpenEXR, PNG, D, uh, DDS. Uh, we're going to have it in PNG and then put this into Illustrator and make this into SVG. So I uh, can choose where you want this. I'm going to just make a little folder on my desktop for now. Um, I'll put pattern PNG. And I'm going to call this pattern one. Cool. So geo one. Let's make it geo one. So I'm going to just start saving this. Record, save. And then render, I'm going to go to geo two. And make sure this is pattern two, or it's going to save on top of um, what was previously saved. And the last one, Geo3. And I'm going to go into my desktop. And yep, I got all three of them on my desktop. Let's start with pattern one. I'm going to right click, open with Illustrator, and wait for it to load. So once in Illustrator, Sorry, my illustrator is a bit messy. Uh, if I select it, I notice there is a box all around it because it is still a bitmap fold format. I'm gonna make this smaller first. 
and let's make it into a vector. So if you go to the window and then you should check on image trace, you have this box that comes up, correct. And as it is selected, make sure this is highlighted, that this indeed is selected and then change this to be hmm, tracing results outline with outlines. Yeah, let's see what happens. And 128, and I check on preview. Cool. I like that. And if this is all good, you can play around with the threshold, but I remember 128 is good because once you go 127, I don't really see the lines as much. 128 is nice. Um, zoom in to look. And just why not? Let's see what other of this does tracing results without outline. Actually, I just want it to be outline. That seems right. And if that looks good, I'm going to put object and expand. And okay. And I got this path. See, now I see all these different points on it that will have a path. And I'm going to just do this for the other two ones. So now I have all of these three made into paths. Yep. Uh, double check. Is this? Uh, once I made a path, I look inside here, and you might have one file. Usually, the first one that. You won't need it. I'm going to just delete that and delete that. So now I just only have the pattern. So same with this. If I go into the layers and go all the way down, this compound one, I'm going to just delete it. Great. And then also with this pattern one, I'm going to delete this. Awesome. I'm going to put this all in one file for it to be sent out to be um, cut. But before that, I'm going to make sure that this is this stroke. I want this to be 0 0.001. Very good. So all three of these, I'll make sure it is 0 0.001. And this one, point zero zero one. Great. We're gonna make a new file for this to put all three of them in. And depending how big you want this to be right now, I'm just gonna I'm gonna just say create. Have this be on a eight by uh, eight by eleven inches paper. And I'm gonna just simply copy and paste these in here. So over here, I have all three of them ready to be cut, but you notice here, so uh, why I have it burned rather than cut, like this is the file afterwards, spoiler alert, um, is because if this is cut, these are all gonna just be one big circle because <laughs> they're these would uh, not hold on its own. So that's why I have these burned. And so uh, what's also, if you're bringing it to send, I recommend to make the part that you want to be burned rather than cut to a different color than the lines that you want to be cut. So uh, this one, I'm going to make it into a red. Two. So if you're sending it off to be laser cut, then um, what is these? I'm gonna have this spill to be empty. So I'm gonna say the black lines are gonna be uh, cut and the red lines will be, um, be marked or burned. So and then I can just save this. You can have this save as an SVG file and 
once you get them sent off, you can get a nice little print. Uh, I, over here, I'm currently in Cyprus, and I got this the cut in a thinker maker space in Cosia, Cyprus, which I can also send in, uh, put the link to their website in the caption below. But I'm very excited to see if you get to use this method to make some cool little laser cut uh, or plotted designs. And if you do, please share them and add them into um, tag the Interactive Immersive HQ and my personal Instagram, which I'll put my handle in the caption below. Have fun. Bye. Hey, folks. Thanks for watching. If you like our YouTube content, I highly recommend you check out the Interactive and Immersive HQ Pro. The HQ Pro is the only comprehensive educational resource and community for immersive design, touch designer, and creative tech pros. In the HQ Pro trainings, we cover almost any topic you can think of, and we go way more in depth than we do in our YouTube tutorials. We have a private group where Matthew Reagan, myself, and our other industry veteran and pioneer teachers answer your questions every single day. If that sounds cool, click the link in the description to learn more. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more free touch designer and immersive content.